Welcome back to Hoops HD, everybody. I am your host again up here on the top, Chad Sherwood. This is our Big Ten preview show. We're recording it, by the way, for on October 18th. Uh, let me go quickly through our panel here. We've got John Stalika and Rocco Miller on one side of me. I got John Titel, Joby Fortson on the other side, and Matt Sikowski is in the center square. David Griggs down there on the bottom, yeah, kind of relegated in his own little territory <laughs> where he belongs. Um, this is the Big Ten preview show, though, and we are going to be taking a look at the upcoming season of the Big Ten. But let's start with a little quick little recap of what happened last year. On the one hand, the Big Ten had a two seed, a pair of three seeds, and a five seed in the NCAA tournament, had two teams in the Sweet 16, had a team in the national championship game, won the NIT on top of that with Penn State. On the other hand, there were only four teams in the NCAA out of a 14-team conference. Um, and we're being interrupted here by something. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, why'd you take it down? Why'd you take it down? No, David, we are not talking about that. We are not talking about you. We we're talking about last year's Big Ten. Um, and and Titel, was last year a success for the Big Ten or not a success for the Big Ten when you look at how good the top was and how bad the middle was? That's interesting. I always assume that if you have a team in the title game, by default and or definition, it has to be a up season or a great season. But I see your point. I mean, this is a – a conference that had six 20-win teams, and you could argue Penn State is the 69th best team in America if they won the NIT, 26 wins total. Um, it used to be if you finished 9-9 nine and nine in conference play in any power conference, much less the Big Ten, you were a shoe-in. Yeah. But uh, Indiana strike one at 9-9, nine and nine, Penn State strike two at 9-9, nine and nine, Nebraska strike three at 13-5? and five? Well... I, the, the dark web was at work. It was just a mechanism <laughs> keeping Nebraska out. How do you win 13 games in that league and get left out? Because, like, only one of them really mattered. <laughs> Unbalanced schedule. <laughs> well, okay, here's the thing. I checked. Nebraska had to play their last 18 games against power conference teams. Sort um, of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they did play Rutgers in there, though. But <laughs> oh, I just hit myself. Um, yeah. Rocco, do you? How about this year's upcoming Big Ten? Who do you think the best team in the conference is going to be this year? Uh, th this year, I, I will. I will say Michigan State. I know that they technically uh, <laughs> didn't win, win either title last year. Um, uh, that Michigan was able to uh, get them in the in the Big Ten tournament. And, uh, you know, they, their resume really suffered throughout the year. A lot of their fans were upset that they weren't on the one line. Uh, there were some prognosticators throughout the year putting them on the one line unnecessarily, but they had a really poor schedule. They've, they've gone out and corrected that big time this year. They open up with the Champions Classic and then go to um, that Vegas tournament where they're in the mix with Carolina and, and Texas and, and UCLA. So um, the schedule's been addressed. Uh, the returning roster is fantastic. They've got a great recruiting class. Um, I just think they got the most complete team on paper and, and the, put themselves in the best position to be either a one or a two seed uh, out of anybody in this league. Oh, well, well, Matt, uh, Miles Bridges is gone. Jackson is gone. Uh, and yet they're going to be a better team? Yeah, still the better. Like, I think if it was a little stronger at the top of the league, there'd be a real challenge. They may even be second or third. But because Purdue lost so much, because Michigan lost so much, yeah. in that Ohio State lost a lot. Those are the three contenders with them last year. I think because of that, they probably will win. They may even win by a couple of games, even though I can see them being like a one or two seed and then having an early exit from the tournament. Well, that's a, that, 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 we've seen that story before from Michigan State, uh, yeah. at least as a two seed. Um, and Joby, uh, I guess we'll talk about one seeds losing early. I shouldn't go to no, you, but no. I'm going to anyhow. Um, I'm sorry. But uh, but do you agree with Michigan State or do you want to go somewhere else? Yeah, the top? I do agree. It's like, you know, I mean, yeah, I see Michigan State in the same way. Uh, we've done these before. You can take out Villanova and put in Michigan State or take out Kansas but. I see drop-offs. I mean, I, we of the conferences we previewed today, I see a clear number one in three of the four. Uh, and this being the third of those conferences, I think there is a drop-off. We talk about the losses, but, you know, Ward, <laughs> Ward Langford, McQuaid, 
Winston. I mean, it's not like this is a lack of talent. Izzo does what Izzo does. This is a team that can challenge for the final four once again. Well, Ty, I don't know if you agree with them about the, uh, about Michigan state, but if, 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 and if you do, who would be the second best team in the conference? I kind of want to go with nobody. Like they lost so much talent across the board that I don't think anybody jumps off the page. Michigan lost a ton. I don't think they're going back to the title game. Um, so no one finishes second. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if Tony Carr was back at Penn state, I would have them as a hard two and maybe giving the Spartans a run for the one seed, but he leaves a gaping hole. I know they have Stevens and Watkins and other guys, but like this, the whole conference let, let me, has so let, much talent. I want to ask Matt, like, didn't this conference used to have like multiple All Americans like every year? It seemed like Michigan yeah. State always had two. Ohio I, well, State here's one. A, now we got like, the, couple, go yeah. They used to be the benching All American though. The team I have two is solely because of that. It's Purdue because of Carson Edwards. He's so good. That I think, and there's enough else around him. Even though they lost a fair amount, I still think. He could drag Ryan Klein, Nojel Easter, and Matt Harms, and the other kids up because Edwards himself is so good. And I think that's why I'll have Purdue too. Purdue too. You've also got a Dartmouth transfer there, Evan Boudreaux coming into to Purdue. Uh, Sleeko, how about Purdue? Do you agree with Matt, the number two team? It's hard to, what is it, say Purdue for certain just because of the people they're not going to have coming back. But I shudder to say this. I think we do need to give a serious look at a team like Nebraska. Yeah! They bring a lot of their core back. James Palmer Jr., Glenn Watson, Isaac Copeland, who got out of the Georgetown mess, and Isaiah Roby. They are going to have more chances on their schedule this year because I do believe they get Michigan and Michigan State twice, for example. But one other thing Nebraska is going to have to solve, if they can't beat Creighton at home this year, when are they ever going to get the upper hand in that rivalry, for example? Well, well let's turn to uh, – well, you know what, David, you're a huge Nebraska fan, but let me put this aside, put you aside for a second. Well, wait a minute, Rocco, wait a what about this Nebraska team? If, Dave, we'll get to you in a second. Don't well, worry. Well, what? Yeah, Rocco, so, what about Nebraska? So they, Nebraska, yeah, another team I got to see in person last year. James Palmer, Jr., uh, fantastic. A guy gets on a heater. You can't stop him. Uh, Isaiah Roby, very solid player. Copeland as well. Um, you got to love those top three, but God forbid, and, and, and also uh, Watson as well. But I think after that, there's a really significant drop off from those four core players. God forbid anything happens to any of them. If they do, it really could change the dynamic of the season. And I think they really need them all heavily to contribute. Um, and it's really interesting how uh, David's favorite coach is going to distribute minutes to make sure they stay fresh all year. Um, but it, it, assuming it all works out and they get to the end of the year, the schedule is a tiny bit better than last year. Last year, of course, that was dragging them down. Um, it's, I think it's just enough to, to probably get them inside the bubble this year. I think the kid to look out for is uh, Thomas Allen. They're like, I was stunned when Nebraska signed him because he had some real good offers as a late signee in the uh, class of 2017. But years ago. Yeah. got him on campus. He didn't he did do a ton as a freshman, but I think he takes a big step up as a sophomore to join those other four previously mentioned kind of stalwart guys. Well, 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 David, you know what? I'll get to you a second, Nebraska. But first, Joby, what about this Nebraska versus Purdue? Uh, who, who do you think the better team is there? One of them is second or third place team. Uh, you know, I don't want to completely divert from the Tim Miles love, but <laughs> I, I have a shocking team that's my number okay. two. I think. Uh, well, you may, you may have the same uh, two teams that I have, who we haven't mentioned yet. Yeah, this, but... I have a shocking team that I don't care if you agree. We'll see in March, as John Titel says. In a conference where there is a lot of parity, solid teams, but parity, give me the team with a dedicated system, a lot of returning players, including a key go-to, yep. Greg Gard, Ethan Happ, Wisconsin Badgers are going to be back, and they are going to bore you to death and finish 12-6, and 13-5 and five in conference. And finish I mean, agree with that. I, I like well, this whiskey team. Well, yeah, Ty, tell. I wanted to just ask you about this Wisconsin team. A top eight scores back, led by Ethan Happ, who was uh, almost a double double average. Uh, Trice and King, and uh, who were injuries last That's year. They're back healthy. Too, from the outside. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But Ty, tell. What about this Wisconsin team? Couldn't they be that second place team? Could. Um, 
I love Ethan Happ. I love his cousin, J.A. Moore, because he lost to the Red Sox. So thank you, Happ family. Mm -hmm. um, Brad Davison and Trevor Anderson in the backcourt, just sophomores. So hopefully they can get it together. They are very good as freshmen. My concern about Davison, he dislocated his left shoulder last season. Not once, not twice, eight times. Who the heck's the <laughs> trainer on this team? Oh, he just he's, he just pops it right back in. No problem at this point, right? Uh, uh, David, your thoughts about uh, at least uh, Wisconsin and Purdue that we've discussed so far? I don't think you want to discuss any other teams. Well, I don't think either one of them are going to be as good as Nebraska. But, I mean, aside from that, because that's just too much. I, I actually agree big time with Joby. I like this whiskey team. I think that they have a good group of players coming back. Uh, I think – and, again, I know that I say this every year about them, but I was – I've been right every year except last year. It always seems like they finish higher than what they're projected to finish. And it wouldn't shock me to see them way inside the bubble and, you know, close to the top of the standings here. Purdue, I just think they lost too much. I, I, I have more questions than answers about them. Well, Rocco, we've now discussed four Big Ten teams and we have not yet discussed the, the defending national runner-ups. Uh, what about the Wolverines? So I, I think I – you know, I, I'm I'm being put in a position here where I really got to defend Michigan, and I don't <laughs> <laughs> and I don't feel uh, incredibly strong uh, c compared to all the chatter that's been going on so far tonight about how far of a setback Michigan's going to be. But I'll do I'll do my best. Um, I I was really impressed with what we saw towards the end of last year with Jordan Poole, obviously known for hitting the big shot from deep to knock Houston out of the tournament and propel that run to the finals but we all know what Charles Matthews can do and Xavier Simpson's been a role player uh, a really pivotal role player uh, running running uh, the point guard position for Michigan over the last two years and um, they, they bring in a really good group of freshmen I think they're all four stars um, Matt can correct me if I'm wrong on that and no, they, I mean, they have a very good freshman class but I don't know if other than maybe the kid Brzezikas, I think he's the only one that might be a true, like, real instant impact. Okay. Yeah, that, that's helpful. Um, and, and right now, so I'm looking at Michigan more on a national level than a Big Ten level. I feel pretty good about their place in the conference. You know, they're probably anywhere from two to four or two to five range in the, in the league. Um, but from a national standpoint, there's this big gap, I think, between 11 and 30 that you can't really – place teams and that's where I start to lean on coaches and beeline's been doing it year in and year out so I am a little bit higher on Michigan I think they'll ultimately um, be the second best uh, in terms of national seed going into the tournament in in this league but it's it's very close well, well Matt you have some thoughts on this Michigan team also yeah, actually, I, I'm going to say I have to wholeheartedly disagree with you, Rocco. I am all out on Michigan this year. <laughs> I, I, everyone laughed at me for saying, oh, Oregon, they're not making the tournament last year. Well, I'm giving them that same – Michigan, that same team. But the Final Four team who doesn't bring back enough, and I think they take a huge step back this year to the NIT. Uh, I think they, um, they, they struggled to score the ball at times last year, and you lose Abdur Rahman, you lose Wagner. And that and I don't think they have the natural placements coming in. This is where Eli sort of missed a little bit of recruiting for a couple of years now. It's the last this past season, this freshman group, and the next one are coming in are pretty good. But they missed that thick of the couple of years before that. And that's I think that's where they're gonna hurt this year to where they're gonna I have them like eight and ten, nine and nine ish in the big in the Big Ten. And I think the Big Ten is not gonna be strong enough this year where they'll get you in the tourney. Uh, I'm not certain. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to see Michigan not making the tournament. I think there's enough there. I don't think I agree with you either, Matt. But uh, but but Salika, you're an Ohio guy. Uh, I've heard some chatter about the Buckeyes. Uh, how about them this year? Well, they're going to take a little bit of a step back with uh, Jay Sean Tate not going to be coming back. They have another guy who transferred from Florida State, C.J. Walker, but unfortunately he's not going to be eligible till next season. But another guy who did transfer in and w will be eligible this year is Keyshawn mm -hmm. Woods, who came out of uh, Wake Forest. But the only real returners of note are going to be C.J. Jackson, as well as the, the Wesson brothers, Caleb and Andre. But as far as what awaits Ohio State, not too many notable teams on their conference, with one exception. They do have the road opener at uh, Cincinnati, where Fifth Third Arena will be rechristened. 
But other than that, their only other tests of note are going to be at Creighton, at home against Syracuse, and also a neutral court game against UCLA in the CBS Sports Classic. Uh, d- d- David, how about this Ohio State team then? Do, do you agree with still Sleeka that maybe that they're not a tournament team, maybe even? To a point, like, I mean, logic says that they're not, but again, it just seems like uh, Chris Holtman coach teams, whether it's Gardner Webb or Butler or Ohio State last year, seem to always come on strong uh, after starting off with little to no prognostication, positive prognostication. I, for that reason alone, I have nothing to point to other than that it wouldn't shock me if they ended up doing way, way better than what we were expecting. Uh, Well, uh, Joby, we have not yet mentioned the Indiana Hoosiers. How about them? They they have a fascinating uh, freshman coming in here, Romeo Langford, don't they? Yeah, no, he is, uh, um, he is definitely by all accounts, the real deal. Um, yeah, Indiana was at times awful last year. I mean, you know, they, they, I don't know if they, if a freshman, even, a, even one as strong as Langford can really turn around. Uh, yeah, especially if he turns one and done, which I'm not sure if he'll do that, but, uh, he could, um, this is a longer program rebuild than I think we realize at this point in time. We see the name Indiana. It is deservedly a blue blood, but I don't know if I trust them to make the step into the tournament this year. Um, they are actually probably exhibit A of why the conference as a whole was down uh, because they went down because they. Uh, their lack of performance led to a domino effect that didn't allow Nebraska to get the win or Penn state to get a solid win. And I don't know if that a hundred percent changes this year, just because Langford's walking through the door. Well, well Ty tell, do you, do you have, what do you think about that? What do you, what do you think on, on, do you agree with Joby that, that this Indiana team is not ready to, to make it the step into the NCAA tournament? I do, although if Langford is as good as advertised, he might not just be the best rookie in the Big Ten. He might be the best player in the Big Ten. We'll see when we make our picks later. Um, my question is, is it time for a serious conversation about which Miller brother is the best Miller brother in college basketball and or will get the most wins this year? I don't know. Well, who will? I, I, I don't know. I think that's a toss-up, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, well, one of them gets uh, to- one of them gets to start with Chicago State, so that'll be an easy one for Archie. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sad to say for you, Titan, but actually I'm going strongly at Archie. Actually, I like Indiana a fair amount, not just because of Romeo Lakeford. I think Creed left behind a little more than you had thought, and it took him a bit of time to get going last year, but some conference play there played a little better. And I think besides Romeo Lakeford, Juwan Morgan's a really good player. Mm-hmm. And that I think, yeah, Deron Davis, one more year, I think he's going to take another step up. An interesting kid watch, he redshirted it last year, but was a re- one time a top 50 kid in the 2018 class, former classifying, is Race Thompson. Another one of those kind of like six, seven, six, eight multi-positional forward types. That I think Archie's did a wonderful job with guys like him and Dana. And I think he'll step in actually with Morgan and Davis. That could be a real nice front line to go with Romeo Lankford. He's going to have to get something from point guard from either Devontae Green or fellow freshman Robert Finnessy, but you get something from either one of those two that's competent with what, what else is on that roster. I think Indiana could be second or third in the league even. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Rocco, I got you on the screen there. Um, beyond these seven teams we spoke about, is there anybody else that you see contending for a tournament bid out of the, out of the Big Ten that we have not yet discussed? Yes. Um, I, I think there's a lot of teams that are that are going to be close to the bubble line, at least when we get into late January. We'll see how it plays out from there. But um, I, I'd say the next team on my list is with, with the highest ceiling is, is Maryland. And um, the reason for that is Maryland is uh, they're bringing in <clears throat> they, they bring back Anthony Cowan, who's or, or Cohen, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. who's a big scorer. They, losing Herder is a big loss. He ended up being a really high draft pick in the NBA draft. Um, but I think 
um, Matt, this is where I need you again. But this is one of the best recruiting classes, I think, in the in the Big Ten when they're pretty uh, – J- Jalen Smith's a five-star. Um, yeah, no, he's, just, he's legit. That, okay. Yeah, big time. Got Nova for him too, so. Yeah, big, big time recruit. I, I think he needs to add some muscle. Everything I've seen on him, he's really, really thin. But um, one of those really long wingspan guys going to cause problems. Uh, Bruno Fernando is a, a returning guy that, that averaged over 10 as a freshman. Um, Aaron Wiggins, another high uh, recruit coming yeah. in. Um, they've actually got a pretty – I mean, on, on paper, we probably look back on this team in five, five years, ten years, see what these guys end up doing as pros. It will be one of the best teams um, name recognition-wise. But that's, that's where some of the problems are with uh, Coach Turgeon. I, I just – I think he's had this kind of talent before and not been able to get him in the tournament. And um, so right now I've got them just outside the bubble, but they are my next team on the list. Well, well, yeah. I mean, Joby, is, is Tershawn may, maybe on the hot seat now if he, he can't put this team in the tournament? Yes, I, I think he is. He's been on the hot seat for a while. They've just uh, – I actually feel like the only reason he still he survived last year uh, is precisely because the department itself is in a little bit of a mess and they have a awful deficit and Tershawn had some buyout issues in his contract. Um, He's got to perform, and they've got to make the tournament. If he doesn't get them to the tournament, and that's maybe not fair given that this, as Rocco pointed out, a very freshman-laden team, uh, it might not be fair, but life's not fair, and being a college head coach is not, yeah, is not an easy job. I think he could be looking at the unemployment line after this year because I don't see them in the tournament. Well, no team to look at it. It's not right. – Maryland's name is not gone unmentioned in the uh, FBI trial, so that's <laughs> where <laughs> – I was, I was going to say, that doesn't, that doesn't help things either. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, that's more especially like when you're in a little bit of a tenuous position to begin with, you're not going to get any uh, favor, favor of the doubt on that. There's a lot of talk about the Smith recruitment, I might add, as well. But, uh, uh, okay. Titel, last year Iowa went 4-14 four and 14 in the Big Ten – uh, do you see improvement there? This is another team with a lot of guys back like Wisconsin has. They do. I mean, I think they'll be perfectly solid. I think they'll have a winning record and maybe 20 wins. I don't see this as like a 25-win team. Um, they got Bayer up front with Tyler Cook and Luca Garza with Bohannon in the back in the backcourt after all his brothers have played. Jason at Wisconsin, Zach at Air Force, Matt at Northern Iowa, the next Bohannon up. Um, My only concern with Garza, um, he had a little cyst removed from his spleen last month. And by little, I mean it was a nine-pound cyst. Oh, Oh, God. I hope you're not eating anyone. uh, (laughs) David, how about nine-pound cysts? You're a nine-pound cyst, aren't you? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you don't want – I mean, it's best to avoid those. Those can certainly uh, hold you back and keep you from getting inside the bubble. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but, 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 don't worry. He'll be fine. David, I know you've been a big Patino fan for years. How, how about little Ricky up there in Minnesota and, and his team uh, this year? Well, his, his little Ricky seat is getting a little bit hot, I think. Um <laughs> Last or two years ago, they they had a really big year, got into the NCAA tournament. But other than that, they just don't seem to. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think he's really. I, I don't think they've lived up to the expectations that they want. And so, you know, when you fire a guy that in Tubby Smith that took you from a steaming pile of poo all the way up to a tournament caliber regime and into the round of thirty-two, I guess why would you want to hold on to a guy that's not doing nearly that well? Uh, I think that this is kind of a pivotal for year for them. I don't know if they'll get rid of him or not, but I'm not expecting a whole lot out of them. Why would we? Well, well as I say, when you've uh, player arrested well out number tournament bids, that's not yeah. normally a good recipe for a long term uh, tenure there. Uh, that's uh, the, uh, the athletic department that's had a fair amount of turnover, but I think it's, yeah, this is, I think, sort of a make or break year for him. Well, yeah, but, but Matt, this was a team that also was, had a lot of injuries last year, too, if you want to give an excuse for, for why they finished where they did. Yeah, this one. And there's talent on the roster. But you still got Jordan Murphy. You got Amir Coffey. The can mentioned in the Big East podcast, Isaiah Washington. That was a huge get getting him out of the New York area. And they actually have a pretty good freshman big, too, Daniel Arturo. So there's some talent there. It's just, will he piece it together? Yeah, that's where I'll have the doubts. 
to where I mean, it's the big, it's an open league. So who knows? Maybe two years ago they did the same thing. They took all next two all the way up to a five seed. So who knows? Maybe the pieces come together again and they do it. But I think I bet I will be betting against uh, Little Richard before I do betting for him. <laughs> Uh, Stalika, we, we've only got a few teams left. We've not yet discussed the defending NIT champions from Penn State. You have some thoughts on them? Well, they're still going to have some uh, pretty decent returners, as Titel had mentioned, with Lamar Stevens, Mike Watkins, and uh, Josh Reeves. They don't have uh, Shep Garner or, or Bostic coming back, but as far as their schedule, there's not going to be too many chances on there. They have a very winnable tournament in Cancun involving Wright State and either Bradley or SMU. Their biggest tests are going to be Virginia Tech and NC State at Alabama. And then they also have what's become a a fixture game at Duquesne where they should be able to win. But you better not take that one for granted. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, Rocco, what about on the court here? Does this Penn State team have enough weapons to try to get in in the conversation? It's a, it's a good question, Chad, because I think this team is is actually going to bring back probably the best defense in the in the Big Ten, and I think the way they're going to win games is going to be an ugly, kind of hard-to-watch style of play. But it, but against some of the uh, inexperience that the rest of the – that a lot of the teams in the league are, are bringing to the table this year, it could actually be pretty effective. Um, so I, I'm having a hard time placing them because I – I, n- none of the offensive skill. Um, I, I know Stevens and, and Watkins are double figure guys, but I, I, re- I really, they don't have an impact guy like Carr that's quick and create uh, the same way he can and not, and not enough to fill, fill that void. So I think they're really going to be defensive heavy, kind of like some of the earlier Chambers teams were. And, and, and it, could, it could be really effective this year, at least in, in the early part of this, the Big Ten schedule. But uh, ultimately, I don't think it's enough to get them into the tournament. Yeah. Um, I- Joby uh, Northwestern gets back on campus this year with Welsh Ryan Arena back open. It was, you know, what a wonderful idea not to play on campus the year after your first NCAA tournament bid. Uh, but uh, uh, any chance that the Wildcats can, can get some of that magic from two years ago? Uh, I think it'll be better uh, this year. Uh, I'm making it back to the NCAA tournament so Julia Louise Dreyfus can sit in the stands and look at you uh, with Brad Hall. I don't see that happening. Um, but uh, they will not – a lot of people are picking them to finish not last because, unfortunately, Chad, we will talk about last in a second. But second oh, no. to last, okay. I don't see that. I see it a good recruiting class coming in. I see solid uh, – a solid team being built, uh, the pieces long-term. I see – I think you'll see some of that spark. They'll get wins, not nearly enough to be thinking postseason – certainly enough to not be 13th in in the conference. I think Chad is forgetting another point as it relates to Northwestern last year. It wasn't so much Welsh Ryan Arena undergoing renovations as they had to go about an hour away to Allstate Arena for their games, the DePaul syndrome rubbing off of Northwestern. And let me also remind also, I I totally forgot this, Ryan Taylor is the real deal. He's going to come in. He is going to score a lot of points. They – Northwestern's not the type of team you think of about scoring a lot of points. I think he alone, as long as the defense continues what traditionally they do, uh, that's going to be a very key because they actually have someone who can put the ball in the basket, which is not always the case. with. And Chris Collins is a good coach. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we've got a couple teams left to discuss here, and I'm going to turn to my school next because, uh, hey, I'm the host and I can. Uh, and – I mean, Rutgers. I know. Uh, I, I know that it's it's been a little bit of a rough time there. But on the other hand, uh, there is some good guys coming in. Uh, Omaruri, Omaruri, if I can even write his name correctly, which I probably can't. Uh, but uh, with this team, I think you got to take a look at Peter Kiss coming over from from Quinnipiac. Titel, uh, Peter Kiss coming over and is going to lead the Scarlet Knights out of the basement. I mean, he nope. might rise a couple <laughs> steps on the basement heading to the main level, but I don't know that uh, he's going to get them to the first floor. He and Dio Baker are very perfectly average backcourt, and I like Michael, but I think the cupboard is a little bare, and the basement is where they shall remain. Well, I'll tell you the good news is only one senior on the roster. If they can make a little bit of noise this year, uh, you know, it, there may be some room for hope still. I'm not giving up, but 
Uh, David, you, you're going to help me out with the Rutgers bandwagon this year? A, a little bit. I mean, it, it always hurts when you lose what I think was their leading score. But oh, well, Corey I, Sanders, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't help yeah. but think that Rutgers <laughs> that are taking – Small steps in the right direction. Uh, I like the coaching move they've made. Quite frankly, I, I'm a little surprised that Rutgers has been as bad as they've been for as long as they've been. It seems like with that alumni base in that location, they have a lot to offer. I don't know why they haven't experienced some level of success. I mean, even just making the tournament every once in a while. Uh, they've got a long way to go. They did. It was kind of fun watching them in the Big Ten tournament last year. It was probably sort of a fun moment for them getting to win a couple games and getting some momentum going. Um, and, and then they had the win against Seton Hall last year. So, so there are some moments. I kind of wanted to ask you, all kidding aside, is there any energy around that fan base and around that team, or is everybody just sort of – like, is it just completely dormant still? Uh, I'll tell you, I mean, it's still an amazing home court atmosphere uh, that there at the rack. And this is a team that if they do get some momentum, uh, you're going to see an incredible amount of fan turnout for them. We saw it on the football side with Rutgers, where Rutgers football had been nothing. They suddenly have a couple good years, make a couple bowl games, and – I'm seeing Rutgers everywhere in New Jersey throughout the entire state that just, you know, people suddenly found those R's that they had hidden away in the, somewhere. So it is, uh, it, it, it will happen when the team starts winning. The energy is going to pick up really, really quickly here. And, and that's the nature of, I think, the fans in the New York, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania region that, that we're in here. So, uh, you know, it's tough to cheer on a team and get a lot of enthusiasm for a team that, is finishing in last place every year. We get out of the last place and we start getting that momentum. Uh, I can see this Rutgers team rising pretty, pretty quickly in terms of at least getting the fan support. Yeah. Uh, but, Matt, we got one team left to discuss. Uh, let me throw it over to you. How about Brad Underwood's fighting Illini? I think they're going to be the surprise team in the Big Ten and be <laughs> way up the standings compared to it. I'm betting a lot on Brad Underwood. Who is How like, are you not year. buzzing that? <laughs> what podcast are we doing? I'm sorry. I'm not talking Illinois State, man. I'm talking Illinois. No, I think it's because of Brad Underwood. That's what, like before last year, he never had a bad year in his career. And I think he this year, got, he, can, he had one last year, but I think he's so a really good recruiting class. And then the kid is Ayu Desunbu. I think he can come in yeah. and be like what he had at Oklahoma State there with, uh, oh, damn, forgetting his name, though, the real good point guard he went pro a couple years ago. Day, what's Marcus Smart? I'll be out here, but the I can't, like I think the Subaru can do the same thing that for Illinois to do that with anyone else. I think you yeah, got Trent Frazier, real nice player, sophomore coming in, some other recruit pieces. Tavian Jones is a good uh, late signee. They're spicy. I think they're going to be in the upper half of the Big Ten. Uh, I'm 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 way out in a limb, but hey, I hey I'll, I'll take a bold prediction every now and then. To Titel, 14, 14 wins last year, four, only four scholarship players back from that team. Do you see what Matt's seeing? I mean, you can put all your eggs in the Kipper Nichols transfer from Tulane basket, but I don't think that basket's going to hold a lot of eggs. Uh, I, I'm putting it all in Iowa to suit me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all in basically on him and being the great point guard that Underwood's had previously in his career and rode success with. Oh. Rocco, can you strain things out here? I mean, it's a it's a tough team to to predict, Chad, as you can tell. Uh, but but I but I I will say this is a a very small roster outside of De La Rosa, um, and we'll see if Kane can uh, contribute as well. Um, but besides that, they're going to have a lot of uh, um, height little disadvantage uh, compared to the rest of the league and then they also um you know the, the backcourt you know you got to look at this backcourt it's going to be one of the top backcourts in the, in the conference I think just talent wise so um some interesting parts Brad Underwood's a proven coach I'm not going to count him out um so I, I, I got a number for them right here it's 14 <laughs> that's I'm the Rutgers grab that's uh, the Rutgers grab because they are not 14. They're unlucky. Well, may, They're not. May, maybe, may, maybe 13th. Maybe 13th if Rutgers slips up. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, uh, Joby, how about conference player of the year? Who is the best player in the Big Ten this year? I, I, you know, if 
I, if to stay consistent, if Wisconsin really does finish second, Ethan Happ is going to be the reason I – and, you know, the Michigan State guys will diversify their scoring. And, we'll, and so Ethan Happ double-doubles his way to conference player of the year. I actually agree with you. Sleeka, do you agree? Also go with a Happ, and he'll certainly have some uh, chances early in the season to showcase his talents with the games at Xavier, Saint games against NC State at Marquette, and also a sneaky game at Western Kentucky that uh, Wisconsin will be returning from last year. Not a sneaky game. That's an d- outright dangerous game. That's a good WKU team this year. Uh, uh, Titel, how about Happ? You, 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 you want to join us on the bandwagon? I do. I tried to push for Jordan Murphy last year because he was averaging like 20 and 15, and I couldn't get the rest of America to agree, so screw them. Hap it up. Hap it up. Uh, Matt, on the hat bad wagon, I'm surprised, there's another name I'm surprised no one said yet, but go ahead. Well, no, I, and I'll be go because I think he'll be Big Ten Player of the Year, and he might even be National Player of the Year, Carson Edwards. That's oh. where I thought somebody would go, yeah. David? Well, okay, it, you, you've got sophomore Thomas Allen, who came off the bench last year, but should be a huge part of the, the, the final four brace that Nebraska <laughs> 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 uh, 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 Rocco, your thoughts on the player of the year before we go on to the next? Uh... I'm, going with Car- I'm going with Carson Edwards. I think he, uh, you know, I, I can't predict where what Wisconsin's going to finish. I'm feeling much more comfortable with a Purdue um, stud like Ev- Edwards. Matt, let me swing back to you now and, and ask again, uh, who's in the conference and how many wins? Michigan State wins. I'm going to have six teams in. Michigan State, Purdue, I will, unfortunately, Wisconsin, Indiana. Damn, I'm telling because I don't have Michigan in either. Ten- Trying to figure, somehow it's gonna be oh, Nebraska, and then hey, what the hell? I'm going. I'll go all in Illinois in the playing game. I'll go all in on Illinois and on your one. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can keep going all in. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that again at the end of the season, Matt. Uh, but uh, Salika, how about you? How many bids and who's the champion? I would say the three teams I'm probably most confident in, even though two of them are going to be reloading, are going to be Michigan State, Michigan, and Purdue. I'm reasonably sure Wisconsin and Nebraska get in, and there's a possibility Ohio State or Penn State may get bid number six out of this conference. All right. Uh, Titel. I will set the over-under at five. Um, I'll defer to David on Nebraska. Like, I I don't know if they can get in because if you win 13 games, like you said, you're supposed to get in, but they didn't, so I don't know. I think the Spartans win it all, and to be honest, I think, with all respect to Happ and Edwards, I think the Spartans might win the conference by, like, a three-game margin or something. I'm actually with you. I, I, I'm very high on this Michigan State team running away with this conference just like that. I, I'm on six bids. Uh, I don't think Ohio State makes it. I definitely don't think Illinois makes it. I do like Nebraska and Wisconsin in there. David, what about you? Well, okay, I mean, again, you have to keep in mind that this is a team that won 13 games last year while dealing with – what the dark web was doing with them. They've got four starters back. I, I just don't see how – I mean, I think they run away with it. Eight, I, 18 wins in conference, maybe more, even though they're only playing 18. And then I, I after them, I like Michigan State. I mean, I, again, I could see them going 15-3 and three and finishing three games out of first, really like the Spartans. And after that, I kind of like Michigan. I know as much as Michigan lost, I don't think they lost so much that they're not even in, in, in the NCAA tournament. And I really like whiskey. I, I know I like whiskey every year, but I like them again this year, and I, I could see them finishing way up there. Uh, I do think they'll at least get five in, and those will be four of the five. I'm not really sure on who the other team would be. Well, Joby, what about you? Uh, Joby, jo- jo- yeah, what- yeah, go ahead. I'll go with the consensus. Uh, and consensus does not mean Nebraska winning the, the conference. <laughs> Michigan State win it, winning it. I agree with everybody saying that three games sounds about right. Uh, I see five bids uh, right now, maybe six, and the maybe the five. Yeah, Nebraska, uh, w- w- Wisconsin. I will say Nebraska is one of them. Purdue, I say, uh, is one of them. I am reaching, but I think the Buckeyes and Ohio State. I think Chris Holtzman will do it. Number six is 
is there a hangover part four <laughs> built with Michigan? I mean, Michi- I'm like with Matt. I have deep concerns that Michigan might not come out fully this year. If I am all wet, which I could easily be, it's six bids. If I am not, uh, then uh, five. Uh, Rocco, how about you? I am going with uh, six bids, uh, but it's very close. And I'm going with Michigan State. Um, I like what Titel said and, and uh, Joby agreed with on the uh, possible three-game margin of victory. Uh, I'm right there with you guys. Um, there are three teams in my next eight out right now, and that would be uh, Wisconsin being the third team out, Minnesota the sixth team out, and Maryland, the eighth team out. Um, so they're all very close. And then even um, Illinois and Northwestern aren't too far behind that for me. So um, a, lot of, a lot of teams to, to keep an eye on throughout the year. Oh, well, you finally got a little Illinois love going your way, Matt. Uh, <laughs> one person that's that, that, that at least. Um, but, uh, let's run through any other final thoughts. Uh, Matt, while I'm talking about you, any final thoughts about the Big Ten? Yes, it's. I think they'll get a couple more teams in this year than they did last year, but they had a real good recruiting year in 2018. So I can see, like, where the SEC you waited for it to build and then it's built last year, it's going to build this year. I can see that with the Big Ten a year or two from now. And an Ohio State, man, for Kyle, they have a monster 2019 class coming in with uh, DJ Carden, Alonzo Gaffney, DJ Liddell, all top 50 kids. Carden, the point guard, where if I think Ohio State fails this year, it's because of point guard play, they're not going to fail next year with that kid. So, like, they're going to be really good in the future. I think in general, the league. Well, I like to take Diggs at it, especially because the Big Ten people always give Diggs at Biggie schools. But it's going to be a real good league in a couple of years again, but as much as I might not like to admit it. <laughs> Joby. Uh, first year of the 20-game schedule. And what that means, it has big implications. The ACC Big Ten Challenge just got that much more important. Last year, the ACC ran roughshod over the Big Ten, and that led to the beginning of the domino effect where we had these teams, these four teams up front, but you didn't have quality wins down the line. You know, you, know, you didn't have your heart of the Big Ten with these, with these wins. They only won, I think, three or four games in the challenge. They need to get it up. And because going from 18 to 20, that problem only gets worse mathematically. And so if you don't get your wins when you have them, the quality wins when they're there, as well as the exempt tournaments that Stalika often talks about, if you cannot do it then, then you are in deep trouble as a conference, not just team by team. It affects everybody because the connection of 20 games is mathematically so important. And one of the problems, I might add, and the risks of going to 20 games. Yes. We have a great point there. Um, Very and sleepy, he mentioned you, so why don't I call on you next? Well, one thing is going to be for certain last year, and that uh, last year's tournament at Madison Square Garden really is going to be a one-off because Big Ten coaches overall were not pleased with having to uh, compact their schedule and have the week off at the end of the year. But this year we do go back to the traditional rotation of Indianapolis and Chicago as far as the – Big Ten tournament goes, but that's not going to stop Commissioner Jim Delaney from at least trying to uh, make a run for future bidding to Madison Square Garden. But I say that's a an extreme long shot with the Big Big East locked in for another six years, and the ACC probably waiting in the wings to move on from simply having their tournament at the Barclays Center every four to five years. I thought it worked out really well. Yeah. <laughs> Rocco, how about you? Yeah, I'm going to finish with a, a fun fact about your uh, your Rutgers Scarlet Knights this year. It's it's actually an a incoming oh, freshman right. with with a big name, uh, Ron Harper Jr. It is the son of Ron Harper Sr., the one that we all remember from the Chicago Bulls and winning those titles. Um, and side note about Ron, he's now 55 years old with a 18 year old son. So there is hope for guys in my age range to still produce that's great to know um but (laughs) furthermore ron senior an interesting fact about him is actually the godfather of georgia state legend rj hunter now in the nba wow wow all right then now there's fun facts uh uh, let's just do the rest of the show all about Rutgers. (laughs) titel 
<laughs> about, uh, which Nebraska coach is going to lose more games this year? Scott Frost or Tim Miles? But I don't want to touch that one with a ten foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know who the best player is in the Big Ten. I do know the most interesting man in the Big Ten is senior shooting guard in Ann Arbor, Charles Matthews. Think about this resume. He won an SEC title at Kentucky. He tied an NCAA record last year by starting 41 games. And, of course, best of all, he's born on November 15th. 41. All right. um, uh, David, let's just let you close out the show here. I think. Well, well, you, you know, again, you just have to just marvel at uh, what Tim Miles has done. Like I said on Twitter, he once sneezed and God considered it an honor to bless him. Um, he's just done so much, so much. And, and David Grace's memory move for the podcast, everybody. I want to take the chance to thank everyone for joining us for the Big Ten preview show. I'm your host, Chad Sherwood. We got Stalika and Titel next to me. Matt. Uh, Rocco and Jovi are down below as well. Thanks for joining us. David Griggs may or may not come back again by our next podcast. Who knows? Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again.